for some of you who are sophisticated. Uh, this is a double negative, okay? It's all on purpose, it's so you don't forget, okay? Uh, but I entitled the message, Don't Never Forget. Everybody hear me? Don't never forget. Uh, but I've titled it like that to make a point. My text this morning, my title this morning is Don't Never Forget. Uh, but in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, we'll read a verse and then we'll flip over to Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 12. Everybody ready? Amen. You glad to be in the Lord's house? Amen. You glad to be a child of God? Amen. I'm thankful this morning the Lord loves me. Even when I don't deserve to be loved. The Bible says, remember now. All the men and young men say, remember now. Let's do it a little better than that. Remember now. All the ladies and young ladies say, remember now. Remember now. Y'all did better than the men. <clears throat> remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. Turn over to Second Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1, the writer is, the pastor is writing to his congregation to be in remembrance of those things you already know, amen, those things you already know, wherefore I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you know them and be established in the present truth. Yea, I think it meet as long as I am in the tabernacle to stir you up by putting you in remembrance, knowing that shortly I must put off this my tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus Christ has shown me. Moreover, I will endure, endure that ye may be able after my decease to have these things always in remembrance. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Brother Michael, you lead us in prayer, my friend. <coughs> I've got a lot of points here. I'm going to make a lot of statements. I'm not going to preach every point. Okay, I'm just going to be moving on and give you those points. I can't spend time and preach on every single one. But today's message, today's thought, okay, to uh, God's give us this morning is don't never forget. Uh, again, I know that's a double negative and that's not proper English, but that's the title today. Uh, there's coming a time, folks, when the leaders... And when the aged men and women will not, won't be here no more, okay? And you'll have to remember those things in which you learned and was taught. I got a question for you. Who's going to fill their shoes? I hope you're equipping your children and grandchildren to fill your shoes. I hope their shoes are filling. Hello? Yeah. Um, what the pastor writes here to his congregation, to be in remembrance of those things... That you already know, the Bible said. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of the things, though you know them, and be established in the present truth. A lot of things we know, but we forget. We're forgetful people. And that kind of leads me to our thought today. First of all, I'm not going to waste any time, because <clears throat> I don't want to waste your time. But then, first of all, I want to say, I can't preach this message without saying... Um, Yesterday, we recognized 9-11. Everybody, I raise your hand if you know what that is. Everybody know what that is? Yes. All right. Well, a lot of you know, and I don't say this with a mean spirit. The unsaved part of me uh, wants to be ugly about this, okay? Wants to, uh, wants to get revenge. But the saved part of me... Uh, does not. The same part of me, the Holy Spirit of God, tells me to, uh, to love, to forgive. But what I will say, some things need to be said still. Uh, but I don't say this with a, with, a, with a bad spirit or anything like that. But 9-11, we had rag-headed Muslims, Islamic terrorists, flew planes into the Twin Towers and caused the greatest national attack we have ever had. 
Everybody remember that? That's something you don't need to forget. Uh, I believe Washington is forgot. And if they ain't forgot, they don't care. Don't be like him. Uh, but in 9-11, I think 20 years ago, rag-headed Muslims, Islamic terrorists flew planes into the Twin Towers in New York City and caused the greatest national attack we have ever had. And in just a few years, we vote in a Muslim for president by the name of Obama. And for eight years, he absolutely destroyed this nation single-handedly. Don't tell me we didn't forget. We forgot too quick. Tell me, tell me you, you remember. And then we vote in a man who destroyed this nation, who was Muslim. Say, so I wouldn't say that. Well, somebody needs to say it. On yesterday's date, September 11, 2021, made 20 years since our nation's history was changed forever. 246 people went to sleep ahead of their morning flights. 2,309 went to sleep in preparation for another routine day at the office. 343 firefighters, 71 law enforcement officers, and 8 paramedics went to sleep not knowing what their next shift would bring. None of them saw past 10 a.m. the next day. Don't ever forget that. Say, Washington forgot. I don't care what they've done. Don't ever forget that. Amen. I'm a red-blooded American, by the way. She may not be what she used to be, but I'm still proud to be an American. Amen. You may not be. I am. <clears throat> In one single moment, what I'm trying to tell you, church, without saying a whole lot about this. In one single moment, life may never be the same for you. Amen. That's why you ought to cherish life. And cherish your loved ones and be thankful for each and every day that God puts breath in your lungs. I want to take a moment this morning to remember and reflect those 2,977 people whose lives were tragically cut short on September the 11th, 2001. Would that be okay this morning? Let's do that this time. This morning's message is don't never forget. Don't never forget. First of all, I want to say don't never forget what happened that day, 9-11. Second of all, I want to say to you young people, young men, young women, don't never forget this. This is, this is rule number one. This is to keep you out of immorality. This is to keep you from getting pregnant. This is to keep you from, from, from losing your purity. Okay? Uh, young ladies and young men, don't never forget. Don't never forget. Don't never forget this. Don't take your clothes off. If that embarrasses you, you're, you're welcome to leave. 
I'm not, I'm not skipping around. I'm not, I'm not, look, I'm not skipping. I'm not, I'm, 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 I'm sounding the warning. Amen. Don't take your clothes off. Rule number two. Don't never forget this, young people. Keep your clothes on. Amen. Don't never forget this. Don't take your clothes off. I don't care what they tell you. I don't care what, how, how good they talk to you, what they promise you. Don't take your clothes off. Rule number two, to keep you out of a whole lot of trouble. Keep your clothes on. Don't never forget that. Some of you parents and grandparents ought to be helping the preacher today. Because it's preaching time. Young ladies and young men, rule number one, don't take your clothes off. Rule number two, keep your clothes on. Don't never forget that. Don't never forget that country old preacher telling you to keep your clothes on. If you'll always remember rule one and rule two, There'll be no immorality. There'll be more, no, 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 no children before marriage. You won't lose your purity and look back and wish you hadn't lost your purity. If you'll just remember rule one and rule number two. Time somebody said it. Third of all, don't never forget. Don't never forget. I don't care who tells you any different. Don't never forget there is a place called hell don't never forget that first of all don't never forget 9-11 what those people went through and those families are still going through what our country went through I care if Washington forgets it or not I'm not forgetting it <clears throat> you can forget with them I'm not second of all don't forget this young ladies young men don't take your clothes off Second rule, keep your clothes on. Thank you, Seth. Don't never forget there's a place called hell. That hell is a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth where the worm never dies, where the pain never stops, where there, there's unquenchable fire and complete darkness, separated from Christ and all of your loved ones who were born again. There were no exercise, no exit doors. It is a place of a bottom, bottomless pit. Can you imagine falling and falling and falling and falling in outer darkness forever and ever and ever while you're burning? Don't ever forget more people go to hell than they do heaven. Matthew 7 verse 13, I want to read you something. Matthew 7 verse 13. Enter ye, Jesus said, enter ye in the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many, the Bible says, Jesus Christ said this, Many there be which go therein at. Many. Verse 14, Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way that, that which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Verse 21, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and thy name cast out devils, and thy name done mental wo many wonderful works? And then I will profess unto them one of the saddest verses in the word of God. I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Don't ever forget. Don't ever forget. Everybody ain't going to heaven. But guess what? You could get saved today. You could get saved today. You could take care of that problem today. God's give you today. Not tomorrow. Not promise tomorrow. You could get saved today and solve that problem. Don't ever forget. Don't never forget that your family that dies lost goes to hell. Don't never forget that your neighbors that die lost go to hell. Miss Angel said a while ago, where's she at? Miss Angel said a while ago, God's left us here. 
We got work to do. Amen. You got work to do in your circle by life. Wherever God's placed you, we're all placed in different circles. Hello? That's why God's still tearing his coming. Oh, God's got some mercy and grace, don't he? Long suffering. <clears throat> what does long suffering mean? It means he puts up with a lot. Your family that dies lost and go to hell, don't ever forget. They go to hell when they die. They die lost. Your neighbors, your co-workers, your classmates, your friends, if they die lost, they go to a place called hell. Amen. Don't ever forget that. Everybody good? Yeah. All right. <clears throat> as long as you live, don't never forget that the Bible is always right, young people. I don't care what your, your teacher says. I don't care what your professor says. The Bible is always right. Will you always understand the Bible? Not necessarily. But you are, to, you are commanded to stand on the Bible. And to believe it. And to live it. You don't have to understand every, every single thing in the Word of God. If we understood every single thing in the Word of God, Nick, we would be as wise as God. Okay? God don't want you and I being as wise as Him about everything. You just got to stand on it. You don't have to understand every, every single thing in the Word of God. But you are to stand on it. <clears throat> Bible doesn't contain the Word of God. The Bible does not contain. It is the Word of God. It don't contain the truth. It is the truth. From Genesis to Revelation. We are not to put question marks where God puts periods. If it doesn't fit our lifestyle, we're not to change it all up and make it fit our lifestyle. It says what it says and means what it says. We don't need to rewrite it. It needs to be reread. Everybody wants to rewrite God's Word. How about just reread it? Can we turn the air on, please? As long as you live, don't never forget the Bible's always right. Don't never forget God created. Here we go. This might offend some. God created male and God created female. You're not a man in a woman's body. And you are not a woman in a man's body. God did not make that mistake. If he made you a man, God intended on you to be a man. Don't never forget that, young people. If God made you a woman, young ladies, God intended on you to be a lady. You and I do not choose our sex. God does. Don't never forget that. People want you to change. and They want you to listen to what they got. Listen, don't never forget that. By the way, marriage. God created marriage. It is for one man and for one woman for one lifetime. Don't never forget. Don't never forget that we reap what we sow. Amen. I'm thankful, as the song said, Brother Pete, because of God's mercy and love. Amen. I reap a lot better than I sow. Because of His grace. Ain't nothing I've done. But don't forget that we reap what we sow. In Galatians chapter 6, I'll read it. I'm going to read some of them to you. I ain't going to read all of them. But I'll read this one. Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 through 9. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall also reap, shall reap co corruption. But, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, 
for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Amen. Amen. What are you saying? I'm saying our sins will find us out. We won't get away with it. <laughs> you ain't going to get by with it. <clears throat> God don't let his, his children get away with ugly. God don't like ugly. God don't let his children get away with dishonesty. God don't like dishonesty. God don't let his children get away with unkindness. God don't let his children get away with mistreating others. You ain't going to get away with it. It might feel good to that old flesh, son. It might feel good, but you're going to reap what you sow. <clears throat> God don't like gossip. God don't like unforgiveness. God don't like jealousy. You ain't going to get away with it. Don't never forget that. You might get away with it with mom and dad, the preacher. You might get away with it at school. But God sees and knows everything. Amen. Be sure, be sure, be sure, be sure that our sins will find us out. Amen. Be sure of it. We ain't going to get by with it. Don't never forget, young people. Serving God always pays off. Read Romans 8, verse 28. Read the promise of God. It pays now, but it really pays over there when you get to glory. <clears throat> the Bible says, if in this life only we have hope, then we are men most miserable. Everybody understand that? There's more better to come. It gets gooder and gooder. Our dividend, what do you say? I'm saying our dividends aren't in this world. They're out of this world. Yes, sir. I'm telling you, don't ever forget. I don't care who tells you. I don't care when Satan comes by and tries to whisper sweet nothings to you. Don't never forget. It pays to serve God. And then it really pays when you get yonder. Don't never forget. There is still forgiveness for your sins. You're going to need this one in days to come. Don't never forget there's still forgiveness for our sins. When the old devil, he tries and he comes back off, he comes over and tries to bring up your path. I tell you what you can do. You can bring up his future. What is his future? He'll be grabbed by the neck and cast into the lake of fire one of these days. Huh? He won't ever be able to mess with you again. He goes to bringing up all that nonsense. You remind him where he's a going. Amen. Amen, that's right. Don't forget there's still forgiveness for sins. When the devil tries to bring up your past mistakes, listen, he'll haunt you, he'll haunt you, and he'll haunt you. Amen. Don't you ever forget there's forgiveness for your sins. The Bible says if we'll confess our sins, that Jesus and Christ is faithful and just to forgive us of all of our sins. He'll want to remind you of your past failures and this, that, and another. Want to bring you down emotionally and spiritually. You ain't got to listen to that nonsense. You tell that sucker he's washed in blood. Don't never forget. Young people, don't never forget this. Don't never forget this. You be who God is intended you to be why because God made you very special and unique what are you saying I'm sick and tired of watching young people try to be something that they're not to impress somebody who really don't even care about them it brings anxiety in your life you get depressed because you're so worried about what everybody thinks of you your peers you be who God intended you to be that way, that way, if you be who God intended you to be, you'll live the life and you'll, you'll, you'll do the things, you'll live the will of God that God intended on you to do. You'll reach the people God intended on you to reach because you're being who God intended you to be. If you're being a fake, then God can't use you for who he intended to use you. Does that make any sense? God made you very special young person. He made you look like you. He made you act like you. He made you laugh like you. 
not your body. He made you smile like you, not your friends. He made you walk like you walk. Tired of seeing our young people torn out, trying to be something they're not. You be who God intended you to be. You please the Lord. If it pleases the Lord, it'll please you. You'll have joy. You'll have happiness. Don't never forget. You say, Steve, why are you preaching so hard? Because it, it burns me. It, 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 <coughs> it, it upsets me to see our young people like they are. Don't never forget, treat people like you want to be treated. Amen. That's simple. That's God's way. It ain't the old flesh way, though. Flesh don't like that. No, sir. Matthew 7, verse 12. Matthew 7, verse 12. Therefore, all things whatsoever you, Jesus said this, therefore, all things whatsoever you would that man should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Amen. Hello. Don't never forget. Treat people like you want to be treated. Is it always easy? Absolutely not. Moving on. Don't never forget that love is the greatest of all. Amen. Can I get a witness up in here? First Corinthians chapter 13. First Corinthians chapter 13. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity. This is a love chapter. We need to read it every day. Love, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I become a sounding brass or tinkling cymbal. Basically tells me I'm nothing more than an irritating racket, Brother Jimmy. Yeah. Nothing more than an irritating racket to a lost and dying world without the love of God. I can, I can know it all, I can sound good, I can look good and dress good. But listen, without the love of God, you are nothing. You say, what do you mean? Well, I'll read the rest. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains, and I have not charity, the Bible says, I am nothing. And though, listen to all these good works. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and not have charity, it profits me nothing. Not a. Charity suffers long and is kind. We need this in our marriages like none other time. Guy, hey, by the way, the devil's after your marriage. You better fight for it. Charity suffers long and is kind. Charity them and not. Charity bondeth not itself, it is not puffed up, do not behave itself unseemly, seek not her own, is not easily provoked, think of no evil, rejoice not in iniquity, but rejoice in the truth. Listen, this would change America, you understand? The love of God changes everything. It'll change your relationship, it'll change your marriage, it'll transform this country. Don't never forget that charity and love is the greatest of all. It's above everything. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all, endureth all things. Who endureth? Charity never fails, but whether there be prophecy, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, that shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. Verse 13 sums are all up. And now about if faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. For chapter 14, verse 1. Follow after charity. If you want to chase after something in this life, you chase after the love of God. It will change you and transform you so that God can use you in a dark, dying world that we live in. We need the love of God. We need a touch of God. We need a touch of love. I'll never forget, young people, that love is the greatest of all. <clears throat> And in Colossians, it tells us to put it on every day. Y'all read that? Before you leave the house, put this on. It says, put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, forgiving one another. Even if man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, 
so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. Hello. Don't never forget. Don't never forget that love is the greatest of all. Don't never forget that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. That's what my King James Bible says. It may seem we are minority. It may seem we are outnumbered at times. It may seem that the wicked are rejoicing and the righteous are weeping. But I got good news for you this morning. I have read the rest of the book. And we win in the end. You can praise the Lord. We win in the end. It ain't time to jump ship. Because we win in the end. You're on the winning side. It ain't time to give up. You're on the winning side. Stay on the winning side. Don't never forget. To be for something, you've got to be against something. Nobody wants to stand up for anything. The, the line has been blurred. You can't be for something and not against something. What are you saying, sir? You can't be for Bible preaching and, 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 the, and these little sermonettes that tickle your ears. You can't be for both. You can't be for God and the things of God and, 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 be, and be for that crowd at the White House. You can't be for both. They're against God. The Bible says that you and I are to pray hard for them though. But not join them. By the way, they are not your God. The government is not your God. Somebody needs to hear that. <clears throat> you can't be for pro-life and abortion. Everybody's for everything now. The line has been blurred. <clears throat> Again, we are to be praying for those people in Washington. I mean, you got to join them. You ain't got to be for them either. You can go tell them I said it. You can't be for a clean garden and not be against the weeds. You can't be for fresh eggs in the hen house and not be against the possum. I say it's time to stand up for something, folks. Right is still right and wrong is still wrong. I don't care who says it. Right is still right, and wrong is still wrong. Pick you one and stand on it. So what are you saying? I'm saying this. You and I can be a part of this solution, or we can be a part of the problem. Pick you one. You can't be both. Don't never forget to be for something. You've got to be against some things. Don't never forget, it's more blessed to give than to receive. Don't never forget that. I don't care if the devil whispers this and tells you you can't afford. God's nudging you to do something, to help somebody. And the devil's saying, well, you can't afford that. Listen, you can't afford not to give when God's nudging you. Amen. Everybody understand me okay? You can't afford not to give. You can't outgive the Lord. Try it. I dare you to try it. A generous giver, I believe it's the bottom of my heart. I believe the Bible teaches, I believe the generous giver will always have what needs to be given. What are you saying, Steve? I'm saying God will equip you. Whether it's a little bit of your time, whether it's a listening ear, whether it's a little money, whatever it may be. Whether it's a helping hand, you can bear another person's load. That's why it's important that we live for the Lord. We don't live for ourselves every day. All about our agenda. Maybe there's somebody out there God's wanting you to help. Maybe it don't fit into your agenda. Maybe we need to reevaluate. 
Don't ever forget, young people. It's more blessed to give than receive. Being greedy won't get you nowhere in, in God's work. God's work is about giving. Teach your grandchildren that. Teach your children that. To give, 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 give. Give, 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 give. God's a giving God. For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son. That whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He gave it all, folks. If you have children, He gave you those children. He's a giver, folks. If you have life this morning, He gave you that life. He's a giver, folks. Don't forget it's more blessed to give than receive. That's in Acts 20, verse 35. Jesus Christ come on the scene there and made a statement. Not only that, y'all give me about five more country minutes, please. Thank y'all for listening. Don't never forget. Don't never, ever forget that a lady should look like a lady. And that a man should look like a man. Amen. Don't let this corrupt, corruptness change you. Don't ever forget modesty is still God's way, young ladies. How about it, mamas? We ought to be teaching our, young, our, our youngins to, to dress modest. Amen. How to cover it up. How to loosen it up. We ought not be teaching them to wear it tight and wear it low and wear it high. They learn from mom and dad. Your dress code, what I'm saying is this. Your dress code, what you choose to put on your body or not put on your body, identifies you with Christ. Right. You understand that? When the lost and dying world looks at you, when, when, uh, even when saved people look at you, your dress code identifies you with Christ or it identifies you with the world. Amen. Nakedness. Short shorts, short shirts, short shirts, skirts, low blouses, tight clothes, uh, showing your cleavage. What's that do? That identifies you with the world. Amen. We are either making Christ look good or bad with what we choose to put on our bodies or not choose to put on our body. It identifies you with one of the two. Amen. With the Lord Jesus Christ or with the world. How well are you representing him? How well are you representing his church by what you put on your body? Don't never forget. Don't never forget this. Satan hates your guts. Amen. You say, why does he hate my guts so bad? Because the Bible says that we were created in the image of God. And Satan hates God. Y'all understand that? So therefore, he hates God, he hates God's children. Amen. He'll paint pretty pictures. Look, he'll dress that table up. Look, he'll put a spread out there. You'll think, man, this is where it's at. Tell you something, he'll destroy your life. Amen. The front yard of sin, when you ride by the front yard of sin, man, it looks good. You ride by, these birds chirping, grass is green. White picket fence. But he don't show you the backyard. He wants you in there. He wants to get you in there. He knows how to give you decoys. Put decoys in front of you. To make things look like they ain't really. And you get to the backyard. And those birds turn into vultures. That grass is dead. That white picket fence turns into prison bars. And now you, before you know it, you, you own drugs. You drugged up. You don't know where you at. You don't know what your name is. Amen. And he says, I got you now, son. I got you now. Don't you play with him. Don't you flirt with it. Don't you think you're strong enough? Because you ain't. Amen. He's stronger than you are. It ain't a game. While I'm on that, go ahead and just bust this thing right open. While I'm on that, a lot of church people will look down on, 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 on that drug crowd or the, uh, the, all those, uh, the, all that crowd. What about that? Uh, just because a doctor puts, a, puts his name on a prescription, don't make it right. If you're still popping pills and your body don't hurt, 
but you're addicted to them, you're no different than the drug crowd and alcoholic crowd. Taking your volumes, your oxycotton and all that. What is that? That's a dope head. It's one thing if you need it. But if you don't, everybody okay? <clears throat> don't never forget Satan hates your guts. Because we are created in the image of God. Don't never forget, don't never forget this. Jesus loves you. Who does he love you? He loves you so much. Come down here to this dirt hole and live for you. He died for you. He was buried for you. Then he was resurrected for you. And now he sits at the right hand of God and he prays for you. Son, that's good. Man, knowing that the Lord Jesus Christ is praying on our behalf. To the Heavenly Father. That gives me chills. Thank you, Lord, for praying on my behalf. Man. Don't ever forget Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Don't ever get to the point where nope, you don't think nobody cares. Nobody cares about you. You might as well just end your life. You might as well just... Nobody. Jesus Christ loves you. Yeah. And let me, advise, let me give you some advice. Fall back in love with Him. Fall back in love with Him. He'll transform your life, transform your marriage, transform everything. Fall back in love with Him. Quit chasing the things of this world and chase Him. Chase Jesus Christ. Don't never regret it. Don't ever forget Satan hates your guts. Don't ever forget Jesus loves you. Loves you. <clears throat> With that said, as we get invitation ready, don't never forget, don't never forget that tomorrow is not promised. Amen. Live for today. With that said, today, if you're not born again, today is the day of salvation. Amen. The time you have right now is the time that God's given you to get things right with Him, to make things right with Him. You don't know, you may stand before God before the day's over. If you've never accepted Jesus Christ, can I highly, can I highly recommend Jesus to you? Don't reject him. Can I highly recommend you receive Christ as your Lord and Savior? Can I highly recommend that to you? What's holding you back? What's holding you back? What is it? Whatever it is, it ain't worth it. Who's holding you back? Who's holding you back? Whoever it is, it ain't worth it. Jesus Christ, folks, is a life changer. Amen. He is the remedy for all of this nonsense. He is the remedy for your anxiety. He is the remedy for your depression. He is the remedy. I tell you what, you might want to put your phones down if, you, if, you, if, you're, if you're unhappy, if, if you're a child of God and you don't have peace and you don't have joy. Can I recommend you might want to put your phone down and grab this? And let the word of God. How does, how does God speak to us? Through his word. Amen. God's people's got to get in his word. Got to get in his word. Can I recommend Jesus to you? We're not promised tomorrow. I'm going to go back over these. Because they're that important to me. And they should be to you. First of all, don't never forget 9-11. Don't ever forget it. Don't let your children forget it. Talk, teach them, teach them, teach them about it. Don't never forget rule number one. Young ladies, young men, keep your clothes on. Keep your clothes on. Rule number two. In dating and courting, here's rule number one. Keep your clothes on. Here's rule number two. Don't take your clothes off. Amen. Third of all, don't ever forget there's a place called hell. That's right. And that hell is where your neighbors go. Who, who you hadn't worn to Jesus, who you hadn't invited to church, who you've given up on, those, they'll go to hell. Yep, they'll go to hell. Um, as long as you live, don't forget the Bible's always right. Okay, what your doctor says, what your professor says, it don't make a rip. The Bible's always right. Will you always understand it? No, but God wants you to stand on it. Amen. 
Don't ever forget, God created male and female. God created marriage for man, one man, one woman, for one lifetime. That's still right. That's still Bible. That's still Bible. Don't ever forget that we reap what we sow. Keep that in mind when you treat other people ugly, unkind, when you're rude, when you don't go out of your way to help, when you ignore the cries. Have you been ignoring the cries out there? The Bible says, Whosoever stoppeth his cry at the poor, that person will also shall cry and not be heard. That word poor there, if you look it up, it's both physically and spiritually poor people. You can keep ignoring your, those cries around you that God's put around you. But you're going to cry out one day and God ain't going to hear you. Don't ever forget that we reap what we sow. Don't never forget serving God always pays off. Always. And it really pays when you get to heaven. Don't never forget there's still forgiveness for our sins. <clears throat> Don't never forget be who God intended you to be. You're good. Uh, don't never forget, treat people like you want to be treated. Don't never forget, love is the greatest of all. Amen. Charity changes everything. Don't never forget that greater is he that is in you than in he that is in the world. And we win in the end, folks. Might seem like we the minority, might seem like we defeated. Let me tell you something. You stay on the winning side. Don't jump ship now. You don't went too long to jump ship now. <clears throat> don't never forget to be to be for something. You gotta be against some things. Stand up for what's right. Stand up for what's right. Get you a backbone the size of a saw log and stand up for what's right. Stand up for what's right. Stand up for God and stand up for what's right. When God gives you the approval to stand up, you stand up. Don't forget, it's more blessed to give than to receive. Don't never forget, young people, a lady should be looking like a lady and a man should be looking like a man. Yeah. Okay, you should be able to distinguish between the two. You shouldn't have to pull up to the drive through window and your kid's in the back. Mom, is that a boy or a girl? Honestly, it breaks my heart. Amen. I'm like, you know, we're not going to try to embarrass them. Don't be ugly to them. Amen. Say a little prayer. Bow your head. Say, God, somehow, somehow, God, do a work. Touch their life. God's people sometimes are so cruel, mean. Love on them. <clears throat> Don't forget, young people care what he throws in your path, what he shows you, lies you got, devil hates your guts. Amen. Don't ever forget, Jesus loves you Amen. so much. Don't ever forget, that we're not promised tomorrow. Amen. Today is the day. If you need to do business with the Lord, altars are open. Today is the day you can do business. You may never get another invitation, I don't know. You may never get another opportunity to hear God's word preached. Listen, we don't know. Today's the day God's given us. Amen. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit of God. Let Him do what only He can do in your life. Let Him use you. Let Him use you. Let Him use you tomorrow. Let Him use you the next day. Say, God, here am I. Use me. God, put them in my path. God, put someone in my path I can be a blessing to. God, if it's just planting a seed. God, if it's just watering. God, I don't care. God, I don't want the recognition. God, just put me... Where you want me to be. And I promise you, if you'll pray that to God with a sincere heart, God will use you. As we stand to our feet, thank y'all for listening this morning. Thank you for being here. Look at number 128.